Is Prince Harry really living his dream life in California? Or is he trapped in Meghan's narcissistic, ego-driven desire to finally, finally make it in Hollywood. Hello everyone, welcome to Royal News Network. My name is Brittany and today we're gonna to be talking about a couple of the brief comments that Jane Goodall made about Harry and his desire to have his kids, especially Archie at the time, grow up in Africa, be barefoot in Africa, running through the bush, really enjoying and being close to nature and how so far Harry is removed from that vision. Did it ever really exist in the first place? Yes. I think it did. However, although there were security concerns, Harry's desire perhaps that was already there to leave the British monarchy got twisted by his wife who was desperately seeking to try to make it into Hollywood throughout her entire career and faced rejection after rejection after rejection. And now with this royal title, she envisioned herself coming back to Hollywood and slaying the beast that is Tinseltown. However, will this desire really lead them to ruin? Will this desire to fulfill something that she just didn't have the talent to in the first place really break them and expose them for the untalented hacks they really are when it comes to this? And is there a future for them? Where they can they go and what can they do? So I will share with you guys a bit of my thoughts on this topic today, but if you haven't been here to Royal News Network before, like I said, my name is Brittany and I love everything related to Royal, so I offer compelling commentary and news. In addition, I'll be reviewing television shows and movies and sharing a bit of history too. So if you guys wanna subscribe, that would be awesome. I will be doing a crown watch party this week. Obviously it drops on Wednesday, but I do work that day. So I'll try to figure out a couple of times, Thursday may be better. I'll, I'll put that out there. I need to put up a survey. So if you guys want to be on the lookout for that on the community page for this channel, that would be fantastic because I would love to set one up to chat with you guys. But And I also have Royal Fashion News. So if you love Royals and you love Royal Fashion and you want like TR Tuesdays and a review of all the fashion looks in addition to a bunch of other fashion fun and tips, feel free to head out over to that channel as well. And finally, just putting this out there, I have a trip planned to the UK and I have the early bird pricing still right now. So if you guys want to come and spend some time in the UK with me over the Memorial Day weekend, I would love, love to have you. I'm so excited. We'll be in London and in the Cotswolds and we will be doing a day where we go to the Tower of London, St. Paul's Cathedral, and we will be going to Kensington Palace and we'll, you know, fit a couple of other things in there as well. So if you are really, really excited, you love royals and you want to be there right after the coronation and hopefully see all the coronation regalia in the Tower of London, which you can see, feel free to go ahead and check out my travel page. I will put a link in the description box down below, but oh boy. Like I said, Jane Goodall, I don't know if she knew what she was exposing when she made these comments, but I was just struck by, wow, she said the quiet part out loud. She revealed where Harry's heart, I think, truly is and where his heart has always been, which is in Africa. That's where he wanted to go. And I understand there were a lot of security concerns. They debated this. But I feel like it could have been done. I feel like that is entirely possible, especially because now all we know is that Harry and Meghan do fund their own security effort themselves. And I'm sure they could get a decent property in Africa. There's a lot of security available in Africa for certain things. So I don't feel like it was entirely outside the realm of possibility if they left the royal fold to really actually try to live in Africa. But I'm going to guess there's one huge, giant reason why they're not there. But first, let's go over Jane's comments real quick. So Jane and Harry famously met when he did a brief interview with her for Meghan Markle's issue of Vogue. So according to Jane, he wanted to bring Archie up in Africa, running barefoot with African children, she says, of their three-year-old son. He and Meghan Markle also have a daughter, Lilibet, aged 17 months. So this is from the male. And Meghan has just revealed last week that she was, she is part Nigerian. Percentage, you can debate that, but she says she's part Nigerian. I don't necessarily completely doubt that. And so it's kind of funny because the article says that Megan, this is from the Daily Mail, has an affinity to Africa. Yeah, I don't really think she does personally. So I looked at those comments. I was like, yeah, I always thought that 
is what Harry wanted for himself, was to live in Africa, have his kids be in Africa, grow up there, and have a fantastic time and really have this wonderful and amazing experience. But that didn't happen. And obviously, like we said, security issues, but the big, giant, glaring reason why that could not have happened was Meghan Markle. Meghan Markle, I personally think, does not give one crap about Africa. <laughs> She has no desire to live there. She's been there three, maybe four times at the most. So they went for obviously their South Africa tour. Her and Harry went when they were dating to Botswana. And then we also have her going to Rwanda in for as part of World Vision. So I uh, know notably at least three times. Now, if there's a couple more, I could be totally mistaken. But I just don't feel like Africa's really Megan's speed. She just doesn't seem to be that invested. I mean, even when she went on tour in Africa, she didn't even bring her engagement ring. She was so worried, I guess, about security concerns that she refused to take it with her. And granted, obviously, in certain areas of the world, your, your jewelry, especially as a royal, is a high value ticket item, but we have never ever seen Catherine take off her engagement ring, unless it was something where they were perhaps doing sailing and it could have fallen into the ocean or or something to that effect. We have never seen Catherine always wears it, regardless of how impoverished the area she is in, she always seems to wear her engagement ring. Whereas Megan decided, oh, no, nah, you know, you can't risk it in South Africa, so we need to keep this thing safe in the vault at home. Or maybe, yeah. I was gonna say that could have been the time that the, she was giving it, she was getting it remade because she didn't like how Harry designed her engagement ring. I say design because it was like so simple. I don't, you can't really design that. It's just like three stones. There's nothing that interesting about it. But Megan wasn't pleased. So she had to add little pave diamonds around it. She wasn't, she wasn't thrilled with what Harry decided to do for her ring. So from all that, I just never thought Megan was that interested in Africa. Didn't want to live there, had no desire to live there. And it was something that they actually discussed during the Mexit negotiations that Harry and Megan could perhaps live live in Africa somewhere. And obviously security was a big concern. However, that was when the UK was still going to fund their security because Harry and Meghan at the time were trying to work within the system. Now, how much they wanted to work within the system on Meghan's end, uh, I think is, is questionable. But I feel like on Harry and the palace's end, they were genuinely trying to figure out something that worked. Something that would work within the system so Harry could still somewhat be a working royal and yet have that freedom and independence that he always wanted and particularly to live in Africa. Well, as it turns out, two years or three years almost post Mexit now, He's living in Montecito, California. Now I did look this up because I was just curious, hey, what are the demographics in Montecito? Just because it's, I'm sure, a very white area. And I was not disappointed in the slightest in my, in my initial, initial supposition. According to worldpopulationreview.com, the population of white is 87.43%, two or more races, 5%, Asian, 3.68%, other races, 2.81%, African American or black, point, so 0.84%. So how did Harry go from going to Africa to being in one of the whitest spots in the entire country of the United States. Well, again, I think it all comes down to Megan. Megan had no desire to live in Africa. She had no desire to live in Canada. She had no desire to live in the UK. Megan Markle wanted to be in Hollywood. She wanted desperately to be in Hollywood. So looking back through, especially reading Tom Bauer's book, it becomes incredibly clear that Megan had this insatiable desire to be famous. Not be a famous actress, but to be famous. Now what I mean by that is she had no desire to improve her acting skills and therefore become more famous because she was a decently good actress. No, 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 no. She wanted to be famous just to be famous. That's, that was her whole, that's been her whole motivation throughout most of her career, most of her life. And we see this reflected in the lack of depth of her work. She's not a very good actress. And I'm not saying that to be mean. I'm just saying objectively, I don't think she's very good. And 
I would think that way regardless of her time in the British royal family. If I had saw, seen her, I didn't remember her from Horrible Bosses at all in her 30-second thing. I was like, when they first said she was in Horrible Bosses, I was like, I saw that movie twice in theaters. Where Where is she in that movie? And then I was like watching it because I own it, because I like it. And I was like, oh, she had like this two-second bit and that was it. And honestly, that I feel like was a little awkward. And I've seen a couple other things of hers and some of them are bad, they're really bad. And it's one thing you just look at all this and go, okay, she was a really, really crummy actress, but she had delusions of grandeur. So what did she do? She paid Sunshine Sachs a boatload of money to make her as famous as humanly possible. Not to be famous for actually doing something, like having a real talent in something, anything like that. No, she paid them to just promote her to death so that at some point somebody would say, oh, okay, yeah, we'll let you speak in front of the UN. Your, your people are bugging us again, so we'll just shove you up there. It's fine. And that, I feel like, continued throughout most of Megan's career is that she jumped from thing to thing, not necessarily because of talent, but because she, once she had suits, she was able to pay a business like Sunshine Sachs just as much money as humanly possible to promote her to death so that she can move in the circle she wanted to move in so that she can eventually make it to the upper echelon of society and by all of that effort she's she succeeded you can't you can't deny her that she has become enormously famous but it's not really good famous and that's where kind of the rubber is meeting the road here so yes megan has achieved fame that most people could only dream about. However, people are also looking at her going, we need a bit of talent here. We need you to actually be able to create something, to promote something, to do something. And again, we still see this relentless PR drive. So we had the variety interview, the cut interview. We had that horrendous utterly horrendous appearance on the Ellen show where she basically let herself be made a fool of. She squatted so unladylike. She shivered like a real man. And it was just so undignified and so just awful thing to do as a royal. Like she's going around calling herself still the Duchess of Sussex while she lets somebody else just make a complete and utter fool out of her. And why does she do that? Because she wants to be in the Hollywood upper echelon. This is all she's ever wanted was to have the option to be on The Ellen Show. Ellen would not have invited her without that title. Without that title, Meghan Markle was still nothing within the industry. She wasn't. She had, sure, she had her circle in Toronto, but that was it. Hollywood wasn't knocking. Hollywood wasn't calling. Even Hallmark wasn't really caring about her skills. She, she was that bad that even Hallmark didn't want her. So it's just this thing where as time has gone on, it's become clear that Megan, because she finally had this royal title, that the fact that people were finally taking her seriously, that she was like, okay, maybe I can finally jump onto the Hollywood bandwagon. Maybe I can finally make my Hollywood Tinseltown dreams come true. So she's like, okay, Harry, let's, let's leave. It's too terrible here. We must leave. We must leave. And while the palace and perhaps even Harry were all negotiating in good faith, Megan was thinking Hollywood, 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 Hollywood. And of course, that's where they ended up. And I wouldn't say their time there has been a cakewalk by any measure. It's been almost three years since Mexit was announced because it was announced in January 2020. Obviously, we're almost to January 2023, so it's been two years and 10 months. They have one podcast for Spotify, which has been mostly Lampoon. It's not super popular. Spotify is promoting it, of course, and it gets a lot of imprint where it has a lot of media reaction, but I don't feel like people are tuning in in fewer and fewer numbers each week, I would guess. Then we also have the Netflix documentary or reality TV show, which will finally drop, which Harry is apparently once again trying to negotiate when that will happen. And Netflix is like, I'm sure thinking to themselves going, okay, all of our industry is not doing well right now. We have this crown, the crown coming up, which we're hoping will be gangbusters. So we need your reality TV show to follow that. And you're here whining in the corner while we're struggling keeping subscribers that you know, it's not the right time. We wanted to coincide with the book and Netflix is going, we don't care. 
we want our money. We need to, we need to put this on our channel. And so I feel like things aren't going well for Harry and Meghan necessarily behind the scenes. I think they're burning through their money through maintaining their property, paying for their security, praying for their exorbitant lifestyle, which I feel like they're living like billionaires on a millionaire's budget. And I don't feel like they have the capacity to make billions. Somebody said that their brand would be worth a billion dollars. I was like, well, if that's true, it would have been a billion dollar brand when Megan was just by herself because she's the hustler. She's the real talent here. So why, why didn't it happen before? Well, I feel like part of it is that Megan is such a perfectionist and such a control freak that things can't really get off the ground the way they should. We see this reflected in the Variety interview. Megan told Variety that she didn't like her own show yet. She didn't like it. It wasn't the story she wanted to tell. This is what she said. When asked what we can expect from her docuseries, she said, it's nice to be able to trust someone with our story, a seasoned director whose work I've long admired, even if it means it may not be the way we would have told it. But that's not why we're telling it. We're trusting our story to someone else and that means it will go through their lens. It's interesting. My husband has never worked in this industry before. For me, having worked on suits, it's so amazing. It's so amazing to be around so much creative energy and to see how people work together and share their own points of view. That's been really fun. So right there, Megan is already telling us she's not happy with what the final product is, whatever it is. I guess it must be done or close to done or what have you. She's not happy with it. She's not entirely happy with it, but they're the executive producers on their own project. And she also throws the director under the bus saying, well, it's not our vision. You know, it's her vision. So it is what it is, but it's, it's you know, it's, it's fine. It's her vision. And that again tells you, well, you're the executive producer, you were the creative talent here, how is it that you're not happy with it? And I just think it's interesting too, when you read the Variety interview, she's very much talking about the entertainment industry, talking about, ooh, how great it is and everything. And you can feel it, that hair, it's like this is what she wanted. And so she brought Harry into this world because this is the world she wanted. This is everything she's ever wanted is this opportunity to basically be a famous starlet. This is her goal, her dream, everything she's been driving to her entire life. However, it didn't happen before because she didn't really have the talent to do it. And I feel like that's the same thing going on right now. Sure, they're getting a lot of publicity and everything, but will it turn into results? Will it actually impact people? And will it actually help Harry and Meghan make as much money as I'm sure they're blowing through right now? That remains to be seen. But I think it's a reflection on how much this is about Megan. This is about Megan. Megan's desires, Megan's wants, Megan's dreams. Whereas, but Harry, he's just a side note in this situation. He doesn't seem to really matter because this is all relentlessly driving towards what Megan wants. You compare that with Chelsea Davy. Now, I'm not saying Harry and Chelsea should get back together. That's not what I'm saying in the slightest. But you look at her life, that's, I think, what Harry would have wanted for himself, really. Chelsea, she showed a picture recently. I believe she was probably in Africa. She has a child now. She's in a relationship or married. I'm not sure, actually, if she has gotten married or not. But she is has this beautiful view of the ocean in front of her. I remember early in the pandemic, she was still going, like, paddle boarding and with dolphins and it was just like seeing elephants up close. It just seemed like she has an amazing life. And she still is actually in the UK, but she also comes down to Africa a lot. She was raised in Africa. She went to school back in Africa. So she's has two businesses now that she runs. So that's Aya Jewelry. So it's gemstone source, particularly from Africa, from special African mines that she has connections with. So she focuses on diamonds, white topaz, I believe it is, and then emeralds, rubies, and a tanzanite, because tanzanite's only found in Tanzania. So she's very much developed this brand around Africa, and a lot of it's based like tusks, so you see the, the tusk design in her pieces. Then she also has Aya Travel, which is a special boutique travel company that specializes in safaris and trips to Africa. And you just think about that going, 
Wouldn't Harry love to be involved in a business like that? Doesn't that seem like something Harry would be truly good at? I think Harry would be a fantastic guide at a safari in Africa. He would be a great guide. He would be a great hunting guide. And that seems to fit much more with who he is. But when he came to Hollywood and he was pigeonholed in this role as director and chief impact officer of Better Up, and he just seemed to be a sellout to me. He was selling out because his wife wanted to be in Hollywood. His wife wants that Montecito zip code because that means she's made it. She's made it to the top of the Hollywood echelon. She's in Montecito, everybody. So <laughs> you better watch out for her. Very nice, I'm sure, very expensive Range Rover that I'm sure she'll upgrade every year because Megan has always been laser focused on Hollywood. It's all she's ever wanted. And all Harry has ever wanted is to live in Africa and be more of a, have a private life, which he doesn't really have anymore. Sure, they live most of their life in privacy. They're not on the international stage as much as they were when they were royals, but they're essentially trying to do the same thing they were as royals in Hollywood. And so his explanation that we wanted to get away to be private and to live our own lives. I was like, no, you're not. You just took the royal model, changed it up a bit, and are trying to pigeonhole it in the United States so that you can be somehow the Duke and Duchess of Montecito. I don't know. But I just feel like looking at all this together, Harry chose, wanted this. He wanted to be in Africa. He wanted to live there with his children, grow up there with his children, be in the nature there. And now he's stuck basically playing polo so his wife can go out and have paparazzi shoots. He's basically playing a director and producer because his wife really wants to try to finally make it in Hollywood. And I just look at Harry and I just think how sad. And I just wonder because if I'm right, this is, again is mostly just my opinion. And Harry's not living his vision. He's not living his dream. Well, that will start to grate on you. And at some point, something's got to give because if that's not really you, if this is not really at the end of the day what you want to do, it's going to bother you at some point and it's going to fall apart at some point. And honestly, I feel like without the talent that they need to pull all of this off, I don't think this is going to necessarily go all that well. But guys, let me know what you think. I'd love to get your opinions. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again really, really soon. Bye.